Hey guys, what's up? You're back for another episode of Safe House Presents Muluk Murai, a show about what's happened, what's happening, and what will happen in the Malaysian creative arts industry. Uh, we are actually a weekly episode, and this is going to be our 20, I'm not even sure, 25th episode or something like that. Um, as you can see as well, we're on we're on video. Uh, this is our first venture into the video. I think I think um, we've gone through a lot of like revamping stages and changing things around especially during the covid situation like i don't know the show the on podcast uh, on the spotify and google podcast and apple podcast so far has been okay like the audio part has been okay like we've gotten a pretty good reception so far but now as uh, as we are revamping we've gotten a larger team as well and behind the camera you can see shauna or intern who is a film student am i correct yeah, of course, right? Um, so yeah, I just asked her yesterday if she wanted to like test out recording this podcast, um, on video so that we can I don't know kickstart again our, um, video presence on our YouTube lah. And I'm excited to see what it is and how it turns out. And our fortunate, <laughs> our lucky guest for uh, the first return to video today, I have uh ZZ. He is a brand owner and designer of uh idol ido i mean we we're not that acquainted this is my first time as a, most of guests on this show it's the first time that i meet them and um yeah but like we've been talking on instagram and he kind of like coerced me to buy two of his pants i don't know eh? <laughs> uh, so i was like i was kind of like obligated to also pay for it <laughs> but at the end of the day i felt very rewarded like, because i did appreciate the even like the shots that I I said I yeah. don't know if I fit shots or and shit like that and then like he gave me them and I was like fuck this is nice like it it became like quickly my favorite thing to wear already I'm not wearing them now but um yeah it was it was a favorite piece of mine and uh, it, it gave me like a whole new insight onto this whole realm of like streetwear like clothing design um that I wasn't super familiar with. Um, but now I have him and we can talk about it in this episode. So welcome, ZZ. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, are you nervous for the video shit? Still okay. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> yeah. I am probably like lack of sleep right now. Right. Yeah, but yeah, we'll go through that. Okay. I Just mean, no. a coffee. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, yeah, thanks you the fucking coffee, down the <laughs> thing, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm a binge. I'm a binge consumer. Like, for any, coffee? Anything I eat, I have to eat fast. Anything oh, I drink, right. I have to finish. It's, right. It's hard for me to like, Keep it like 20%, 30%. For food, yeah, though. Because yeah. I don't like cold food. But yeah. for coffee, I can't drink too much. Stuff, you have to slowly Because I, I, it, I right? still get the the rush you get. I mean, I, I've i been drinking coffee for a while now. But after a cup, I still get like a... Oh, you still get the energy from yeah. it. Yeah. I but still I, still, get I can co- actually go to sleep even really coffee. That yeah. means that you drank too much, dude. Change to like matcha or something. I don't know, man. But I don't think I drink a lot of coffee. It's just that my body <laughs> don't react too much to anything i drink yeah right yeah. um but did you try matcha yet not yet have you tried hijau hijau no yeah you haven't tried matcha you haven't, haven't tried hijau no. that's like the new <laughs> in thing right like um have you seen it the the store and everything you know what i'm talking about you mean the jane the store? yeah yeah no i haven't tried it yet no yeah, yeah. i've seen it i've seen it um yeah so like i said uh earlier in the intro like you your mm-hmm. your brand is kind of like in this realm of clothing design in in malaysia that i'm not super like familiar with because i don't really understand where it lies Mm -hmm. like i've had prior experience or like working with people in the streetwear scene um that is like i guess i like for me when i think about streetwear it's definitely heavily print and like a lot of pop culture references and not so much like design centric and that that's like i don't know you know like for me, it's easier to think about things when I categorize them and put them in boxes. Mm. And But I do see a lot of these brands in Malaysia, like Your Brand, mm. um, Good Times, Wear, uh, Shuren Projects. Uh, fuck, what's the other one? What's the other one that I was thinking about? Which one? Uh, Tunwe, Tunwe's uh, oh, Future, Future, Future Made Studio. Made studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like, it, it's like quite a big presence, but it's not the stereotypical perception of streetwear, yep, which yep. is just like, heavily uh dependent on prints and and or like tnt or like stone and co and this mm. these are the stuff mm. that i'm like more accustomed to yeah. you know um yeah what what how was it like in the experience like 
was it do you think that there's like a general trend in Malaysia to be focusing also on this like design element of of mm-hmm. streetwear and would you even call it like streetwear right now um actually to be honest like for my own definition of streetwear i believe streetwear is sort of like very channel centric right now channel meaning um let's say like back when i, I just started out the huge media was probably like high snobiety high beast right right yeah so anytime you feel like for this generation of creators, if you consume that kind of content mm. from these websites, meaning your main source of inspiration or something like that, that would be categorized as very channel centric. Meaning, you are you are, talking about a channel like media outlet? Yeah, correct. When let's say Hypebeast is featuring even let's say Dior, but when it's not streetwear, but it can be categorized as streetwear because of the medium that they are featured in. Right. Yeah. So therefore, it created sort of like the when we were younger meaning like five six years ago when we consume this kind of content right yeah it's sort of be- in at least like embedded into your brain like anything that goes on the website and you source in- inspiration from yeah it's sort of streetwear meaning it's in the category of people with the same interests okay yeah. Do you, is that like a yeah. recent kind of development because i'm i'm assuming no, it's, it's not. not streetwear back then like media like media centric mm-hmm. um content or look or aesthetic or style mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. i didn't i don't think i assumed back then was it like magazines and stuff like whatever like these kind of streetwear magazines mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. showcase yeah. that became streetwear yeah so for me because um i don't really look at magazines like when i started out meaning right. I, I definitely don't consider myself a streetwear hit meaning streetwear hit but in the what i'm trying to say is that the crowd that consumes these kind of brands and uh Different, different, you know, aesthetic, right? Yeah. There's, they sort of take interest in different kind of looks. Like, even if, let's say, you are heavily, like, uh, graphic printed brand. Yeah. And then versus something that is very technical and also have, let's say, zippers, pockets, that kind of thing. Yeah. That would also currently uh, will interest the same kind of crowd, meaning people will pay attention to right. so called streetwear. Right, right. Yeah. But of course, like, even in streetwear, you can say some heavily printed stuff like their surf brand, their skate brands. So these are actually fundamentally actually different. Yeah. But because maybe aesthetically they are quite close. Yeah. And then you would consider like, oh, that's streetwear, right? Yeah. yeah. But streetwear right now is a is a blurred lines because like as you know, even someone like Off White when it started, yeah, is a very expensive streetwear. But I I'm sure back then there is no X ex- very expensive streetwear. Yeah. But it because of the aesthetic. Yeah. They sort of breach the ground so like, that, that that's correct. my my yeah. where i come from yeah. where i think like okay she has to like adhere to a certain kind of element or whatever yeah um but i don't know what the foundation of the whole thing is mm. back then in the 90s or whatever yeah that, like, i'm not sure maybe in reference yeah. to pop culture yeah. or like if you're actually on the street and you're wearing it you know i don't know yeah, what yeah, these yeah. things are yeah. like i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to say yeah. but like that's just how i see it now and then there's this influx of these brands in malaysia like mm. like at the ones i mentioned i mean most of the ones i mentioned are like chinese brands like for some reason i can't even like mm-hmm. Think about Malay, like really strong Malay or like any, yeah, other, yeah, you know, yeah. like there's yeah, Malay centric yeah, yeah. uh, streetwear brands because right. I don't think they just last that long. Probably. I think one of the reasons, right, um, there's a, I think it's a natural progression kind of thing where because let's, let's just, just give an example right now here is that say you speak Chinese because a lot of our production is actually done in China. Right. Therefore, it is a very natural thing that um, if let's say you're you only speak Malay, but but it's also naturally that you can't deal with production in China because it's difficult, right? You have to hire someone. Just that communication. Yeah, issue. correct. Yeah, so it it doesn't mean that there is uh there is not enough people like trying to make the similar aesthetic. It's just that because a lot of our especially our community, a lot of our production is done in China. Therefore, probably why Chinese brands like. Then survive until now maybe yeah this is this is something i'm not sure but because production having been to jakarta and everything like yeah. indonesia and stuff like that the if they don't have an in-house team it is very hard for them to create garments of the level as compared to china yeah meaning right. the the demand is not there the 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 fabrication is not at the highest quality as compared to china china is better china is better definitely as of now. Yeah, I also assume that local yeah. would have it on like manufacturers and stuff oh, that people started using. The local manufacturer, you have to 
pinpoint what you want to do. Let's say you are doing graphic tea. Yeah. You can do that within Malaysia. Like printing. Yeah, because printing is fine. Yeah. Like if, if you print in whatever country you want to think yeah. of, it's, it's okay. Clothes, right? Yeah, it's, it's at a level where it's uh, acceptable. Yeah. yeah. But let's say if you want to cut like some of the stuff, like for example, more technical, like some of the pens that I create, it's very hard to find a manufacturer in Malaysia hmm. that could also understand the aesthetic and also have the craftsmanship to do it properly. Okay. For I, example, uh, like like the symmetry of both sides. All right. Yeah, I've tried mo- like sometimes different different sources. It, it's gonna fucked up pretty bad, lah. You know. I have yeah. a question. So like yeah. when when you send it to China, it's not like some like uh mass produced like uh no. factory or whatever. Yeah, it, yeah. It's a special place that makes this. I mean, I don't know. Like yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it's like I a specialty for these kinds of clothes. Uh, what, I can explain to you. Yeah. Uh, in China. Because like definitely the volume is there, meaning yeah. uh people that works there as a seamstress or or in Chinese you call it sifu, uh, Cantonese you call it sifu. Sifu is the master, the right. master seamstress. Yeah. To th- they will make the first sample, right? So therefore, these people are very experienced, ranging from menswear to right. women's wear, anything yeah. you can think of, right? So usually, like tailors, huh? yeah, it's tailors? like tailor, correct? Okay. It's like tailor, but more towards creating samples. They right. usually work within a factory. That means they are the first, they, are, they will be the first person to make the sample. And then the factory will emulate what he does. So one person cannot do everything. Therefore, this person's blueprint will allow the workers to I get create it. that I kind get it, of, I get it. Yeah. So but we don't have the system in Malaysia. I mean, or at least that's popular. It is not that we don't have a system, but um, we are not, because number one, uh, it is driven by money. This is industry, like any other industry, is driven by money. So when there is not enough demand, yeah. therefore the, the production will not be at a quality because usually they will want to flip the money very quickly. For example, if you run a print shop, what you want to do is a uniform uh, order. Yeah. For example, let's say you run Top Glove. Say you have 2,000 employees and you, want, you need to create 3,000 garments. So that is easy money. That means it's quick. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't require very heavy seamstress work, but it gets you the money because there's volume. Yeah. But if you talk about brands like ours uh, probably you, you think like on top of my head you think in the end maximum you can sell 40 pieces therefore when you request for 40 pieces they would struggle to accept your order, order. anyway because there's no money for them to make yeah and they don't un- play, they're not playing with the volume huh? yeah because it, it doesn't make sense for them to take on so it's a very you can't complain because it's true everyone's yeah. trying to survive with money so when these factories they cannot uh, you know, cannot cooperate with you with your orders, right? That is why the training is not there. That means the the ecosystem of production is not there right now yeah. to create brands uh, for us. Like, for example, that focuses more on like the technical details and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you say like you are only a brand that does t-shirt printing, let's say just that, then it's okay because ultimately uh, cost can be low and you can flip it at a higher price also. Therefore, they would all be okay to take on your jobs because it's so much easier. Makes like, sense. Yeah, it can yeah. Done, be done in two days. Yeah, Let's say yeah. it's just printing your... Yeah. Yeah. So the difference right now yeah. is just like China has a capability correct. to you know produce these kinds of products yes, at correct. whatever rate. And then in Malaysia, we just haven't developed that entirely. Yeah, yeah. So that in China, it's the same. You got to have an MOQ, meaning your minimum yeah. order. Yeah, but it really depends on who you deal with because like for me, it is a very tough journey. Meaning in the beginning, I was very naive. I created like 100, 100 plus pieces for each design. Because you assume that you would sell. You assume because you yeah. had no experience there. So therefore, you will always listen to their MOQ. Meaning, oh, what's your MOQ? Oh, at least 150. So you're going to make 150, right? Yeah. But it's a mistake because your brand doesn't have the demand yet. Yeah. So therefore, you have to calibrate your relationship with the factory to a point where they would listen to your to what you yeah, propose yeah. like I 40 mean, you pieces develop that pieces. relationship yeah, for them to be starting yeah. to be okay with correct. it yeah. okay so now I understand yeah. okay maybe like Chinese yeah. brands do have that like ease of a communication and having building that relationship yeah, with Easier, Chinese not, manufacturers it's still very hard yeah. and also like I, I just it, it, it's actually a good insight huh, because I, I never would have guessed that it was mm. like some production uh, it was somewhere in the production line that, mm. that becomes an issue between like Chinese brands and Malay or like any other like I don't know like what Chinese but uh, you know what I'm talking about right? like there's okay. definitely a demographic that's like uh, intended or that they're capitalizing off of um, obviously there are like outliers that buy it but generally um, these brands are like mostly 
um, by Chinese uh, designers or, mm-hmm. or founders. This is what I'm talking about. Those those brands that mm. I mentioned earlier. Mm. Like I said, I can't even think about any other brand that's like I mean Transit, um, yeah, yeah. Steak Shop, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that's like really the only one that I think would fit in that criteria. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, and then they closed down. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and I see people like uh, like like your brands like you mm. and and you guys are still like going. How long has it been for? I do you do like quite a I've while. I've done it for really, five right? years. Mm. Yeah, five years. And how yeah. many collections? I mean, I don't know if you'd go even go by collections. Yeah, yeah. Anything. I used to go with collections. Yeah, but it, uh, yes, it has started to become more singular pieces. Yeah. And in the future, we are trying right now transiting to bringing the production back to in house, meaning yeah. meaning piece by piece. Yeah, yeah, which is something work in progress. Uh, which I'm working on right now, which, but like, which is proven to be very tough. Yeah, but yeah. I'm trying to do that. You yeah. lasted like five years already. Yeah, but you have to, I would say, because when you run a brand, you have to realize your, number one, your strengths and, and how you should deal with it. Meaning, when you say continue running, anyone can continue running something. It depends on how you do it. Like, for example, for me, I'm trying to stay active with singular pieces of drops. Like, right. singular pieces. That means you, you stay on top of mine. You try doesn't mean you are, but you try. But it really depends on how passionate you are. For example, yeah, of course. Yeah. The brands <laughs> that you've probably realized like two, three years come out yeah. and then they did something very similar to other brands. Why do they die? Because they thought they would have a demand for yeah. the kind of things that they do, but actually don't have. But therefore, they feel very dejected and they feel like, oh, you know what? Nobody's looking at my stuff. I'm going to, you know, just close down the brand or whatever. Not because they run out of money, because they feel like it's not worth it anymore. Demotivated. Yeah. You have to feel like it's worth it because ultimately, Dude, but like, yeah, that, that you know. That is such a yeah. common yeah. trope in, in like, mm. like, okay. Correct. Say for us, you present Muluk Murai, show about Malaysian yeah. creative arts and yeah. we've had like 25 episodes. I think this is a 25 episode. Yeah. I can't confirm. Yep. Whatever. But most of the guests that I talk to, and this doesn't matter where it's like music or mm-hmm. like uh, clothes or yeah. um. Uh, what the fuck who else did I talk to though? <laughs> a lot of these yeah. creatives at the end of the day it's yeah. either like you really persevere and push on Correct. or you feel like oh fuck I'm on the way to become jaded because mm. you can't really make a decent living doing yeah. this shit full time that is so true also. you know and yeah. I think um, like <laughs> so it's funny I yeah. think one of the more two important episodes for this point yeah. uh, that I could refer back to is uh, number one, the Zulam Run episode, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then number two is the K-pop episode that yeah, I go yeah. on a long-ass rant about. I mean, it's just me bitching, uh, basically. Yeah, yeah. But the first one is Zulam Ran. Mm. He's kind of like the character that I look up to in the sense that mm. he's able to make us, uh, like, he's able to transition yeah. from, like, a corporate career or, like, to just, like, an independent artist yeah. to an actual studio that's getting proper gigs, you know? Correct. And, like, You're making right. a living out of himself. Yeah. Um, given his age which is like 34 so I don't think he's ever experienced being jaded everything was like a gradual experience for him that I like see, I see. Yeah. he kept growing and yeah. he kept get, getting new opportunities yep. and the fact that he's able to create that um, I guess uh, for himself mm. yeah. is something that you rarely rarely see mm. in, within the community correct correct you're right um, yeah. yeah and then the second one is the K-pop rap mm-hmm. and I guess that that's just basically me bitching about the our state in the in the creative arts industry is that right. like people don't really value or people mm. don't really want to pay for the things around us. Yeah. That's why these creatives are always coming into the same roadblocks, which is, oh fuck, yeah. I'm not getting paid, and yeah. fuck, I feel rejected. Yeah. I feel like people don't like my shit. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't know how it works, but like in it, if we are to really like discuss and consider yeah. how to actually make a living, we look at someone yeah. like Zulam, right? Yeah, yeah. Correct. Do you? Okay, so <laughs> it is funny because like. In Malaysia, obvious, obviously, there are still multiple facets. Also, yeah. Oh, yeah. multiple facets of creativity, right? Yeah. Like you have advertising, you have music, you have, you have fashion. So I would say music and fashion is definitely forever. It's going to be very tough to break through. Like no matter what country you're in, but music and fashion. I don't know. I don't think fashion now. Eh? You don't think so? There's so many that like make it. Yeah, you you feel like a lot of make it, but also there's a lot that fail. For sure, but that's yeah. every everything in the world. Yeah, that's why. But in Malaysia. Why you just like just now you mentioned like Zulamra and something yeah. like that, right? Um, because I was in the advertising industry, so, yeah. so I you can understand s- it. I can, I, of course, I understand it. So I can tell you safely that that is the industry that has money flow. There's a flow of money going on, meaning clients are willing to pay. Therefore, it is a more stable industry. 
advertising. Yeah. Not to say it's doing well right now. No. Maybe it used to be better, but 100%ly, when you work within like e-commerce or advertising, right? Yeah, they have money they to pay. They have the money to pay you. Yeah. So recently, I also like, I was looking into some senior roles in, in some e-commerce company. So I did come up with a, you know, asking price and they are willing, because they have the money in place, they are willing to give the car money, which I'm going to go back to fashion. That kind of money that they are willing to pay you even if you work for yourself, right? It's very hard for you to reach a point where you're making like that gaji that you wish to look for. Yeah. It's difficult because our industry, like the fashion scene in Malaysia, yeah. it is not at a state where it's self-sustaining. Meaning Malaysians don't pur- purchase enough Malaysian products in order for brands to be stable. Yeah. And if you look at, look around our countries, like uh, our neighboring countries. So some of the Thailand brand and also like Jakarta brand, like for example, a brand that we collaborated with, which is Orbit Gear, from Indonesia, they are more self-sustaining because although they have international crowd, but their own crowd really appreciates their own yeah. creation. I as think well. people say the same thing about crazy. Indonesia. Ev- across really, really. all of these, yeah. whatever conversations, yeah. everyone says the same right. thing about Indonesia. Yeah. And I know Malaysians like to make the excuse, oh yeah, they got more <laughs> people there. No, no, it's not. But they actually yeah. support and they actually correct. pay for their correct, each correct. other's things, right? Yeah. So and you're right, like, I guess like if as a, as a, I mean, if you get it, makan gaji, you, okay, obviously there's, yeah. there's two options, like you makan gaji or you want to become an artist wh- yeah. when you have to treat your artistry as a business. Correct. And then you have to look at it like yeah. all the, the th- same, same like, yeah. okay, what is my profit margin? Mm-hmm. You know, what, who is my demographic? And I yeah. guess like sometimes when people want to be creative, they don't yeah. think about that. Yeah. And I think that's where Zulamran really yeah. kind of capitalized on Correct. because he knew, okay, I need to get a stream of flow of money then he, you can do he, you, what you want. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like correct. <laughs> the the main thing that he said in the podcast that I kept like getting from him was mm-hmm. that most of his jobs that he gets is from networking. Yes, doesn't right. say oh it's because my creativity level through the roof. Yeah. it's not saying that I'm the next Kanye West or yeah, Van yeah. Gogh or whatever the yeah. fuck. He really said oh, most of it is just coming from networking. And if you view your business, uh, if you view your artistry yeah. or your studio or your brand mm-hmm. as a business. Something like sim- as simple as networking could yeah. be it. Correct, correct. So networking is really important. Like for us, it really works very well when we were when we started out, mm. and we really use Instagram to the maximum. Like because what we do is actually borderline techwear. Yeah. And in the techwear community, these are very low key crowds. Like these are not people that buy something and then they post on Instagram. Like oh yeah, I got this shit. Really? You know? yeah. no, they're not like the avant garde. No, no, no. This this <laughs> avant garde crowd, they are very like. They keep it to themselves. Yeah. When they buy something, they like they like you know quality stuff that has a very uh, underdog kind of value kind of thing. Something like acronym, you know, like in the in the realm of popular brands. No, right? Right, dude, yeah. the acronym is fucking massive. No, bro. bro. No, bro. You, what if are you, if you talking talk about, about acronym, acronym is massive, right? But uh, but even until this day, they are still doing very low quantity, and they are also like their their team is probably like just eight people. As compared to some of the local brands that we have, we probably have brands that have. 20, 30 old people. Really? But yeah, for sure. 100%. But what I mean is they they keep a very good attitude, meaning they surround the brand with the right value. Therefore, you have international crowd. I mean, you create a community. La. Yeah, you create a real community. Yeah. So what the problem with techware is that the slight problem is that the people that are in it, they are very, very picky. That means there are also different groups within the techware community. Like, like, for example, if you talk about Orbit Gear, right? Orbit Gear is a middle price range techwear product. So some of the elitist, you, you have these elitist techwear people, right? That only fucks with, like, acronym. Yeah. But some of the other brands, like uh, uh, Acronym, Stone Island, they're kind of, like, high-end, high-end techwear, right? So they, they, they rarely appreciate, like, middle-end brand or, like, functional details and stuff like that. Yeah, so I- even within the community, there's a lot of toxicity like, in terms of forum yeah, argument yeah. and that kind of shit, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, that, it's very crazy. <laughs> that's like normal, the, though. I mean, just yeah. to sidetrack a bit, I just, yeah. like, I don't know if you guys know the, the, mm. the, the, the I guess, the, the founder or the face of acronym, um, mm. Arison Q. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I don't know when this was, like, a long time ago, five, six years ago, I was on yeah. Instagram, and then, I like stumbled upon a picture of him wearing a Hawaiian shirt yeah. and I just couldn't brain that it was him because I'd never seen him in any other thing yeah, except yeah. for like except for his own shit. stuff correct yeah. correct yeah. and then I was just like what the fuck is he wearing like he's wearing a Hawaiian <laughs> I mean that's a, a slight tangent now, but yeah. 
Um, but you're right. Like yeah. when you when you create a community, once any community happens, it's always elitist, and that goes for like you yeah. know. I keep making the same references, like music yeah. and stuff. Like we have now mm. nowadays, like elitist and music. Oh, you, this is you not have to real be this music. Way, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, if correct, you want right. to be it, I mean, yeah. we ho- luckily we don't have like hip hop elitist anymore. Like that was so prevalent back then. Mm-hmm. But like nowadays, like you'd have like DJs or certain kind of like genres that people kind of you know look down on on, on other, but. That kind of blocks innovation, you know, and yes. it kind of blocks like creativity from growing. It um, is, it is. You know, like wh- if Orbit Gear kind of like mm. s- starts doing their own shit, and, and they might not be able to meet the highest standards of mm. acronym and Arthur yeah, X, correct, and, definitely, and uh, Stone Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? You yeah. know, you're not their market. Move on. You want the high expensive shit? Move on. You know, like th- there yeah, is yeah, yeah. there exactly. are, there will be a market that can't afford like me, can't afford Absolutely. fucking acronym. Correct. And I would be able to, like yeah. your stuff, huh? Yeah. You know, like when I looked at it, mm. like most of your shit is fucking sold out anyway because you just, like produce so low uh, uh, yeah. quantity. 50. But some, some like not all. Yeah. yeah, still a lot of stocks. <laughs> but um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I'm into it. I like the the, the growth that we have yeah. in our in a in our scene right now to mm. to really say that okay, maybe this kind of style or like mm. I don't know, like they wouldn't call it a genre of clothing. Mm-hmm. What do you call it? You mean the the kind of style that we yeah. do? It's like functional wear, functional wear, functional yeah. wear, and then very sort of like performs well for you on a yeah. routine that kind of thing. Yeah. I would I like yeah. that because we need that shit. Yeah, you know, you people really keep making shit. hoodies and and like. Yeah upper blazers and shit that this is jackets it's just too hard for us to wear exactly. here Malaysia. Yeah. it makes no know, sense right? for us to keep wearing that shit yeah. why don't you just give me things that I could wear every single day in Malaysia when I walk around correct yeah. you know comfortable yeah. easy to wear I don't know what, what, what do you think what's your intake into it do you think that these brands take like shit like the culture or the weather like localize these mm. these uh, your, their products and their mm-hmm. clothes yeah so it really depends on whether the brand is targeting just local or is it right. yeah because a lot of the man- mentions brand that it, just now you mentioned some of the brands right they have footprints in let's say Taiwan they have footprints yeah. in US like whatever country right therefore it is inevitable that you create like hoodies like like right. winter gears right so this is necessary because in the end of the day you're you making it. money you, yeah. you sell wholesale or you or your crowd is in that particular country. Therefore, you have to make the money and then maybe when you have the money, you can start making more summer wear for mm. Malaysian countries and stuff like that. But this is a balance that is very hard to make because every time you commit, let's say a collection, so I'm the one of the rare people that don't care, don't really care about collection mm. because I, I believe in a singular product whether it works or not. And also because definitely there's some budget constraint going on. Yeah, yeah But... I am not a collection-minded kind of designer where I'm just focusing on singular pieces, singular pieces. Yeah. But people that does collection, like some of our friends, it is tough because if you have stockies that you need to you need to cater to, you have to create a range, and therefore they will order from you, and you make that money from there. Mm. Yeah. So in in the case of summer wear, you actually have a lot a lot of options. Just that. Just that it may not be at a level where it catch your eye, catches your eye, or is very exceptional. But some of the brands like Ana Abu is doing really well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so what Ana Abu? Oh uh, yeah, that, I'm is, very that fa- is a brand. Yeah, yeah, I'm very fascinated by the brand because they did it really for this market. If you are using a best example, because yeah, I mean it's it's a, it's a, it's in the middle a bit, right? It's it's like no, it's definitely not in the middle. No? They are um, they're lo- full lower, on Malay lower cost. kind of mass. Correct, Malay, correct, correct. Uh, it's a mm, yeah, go on. Man. It's a lower cost. Basically, it's a very low cost production. Yeah. But why are they doing so well? Like what they do good is that they reference a lot of uh, high fashion fitting. Right. And then you, you swap it out with a cheaper material. Therefore, you create that look. Maybe it's not as, maybe sometimes, sometimes not as comfortable. It doesn't mean that it's not comfortable. But sometimes these lower end uh, materials would still work. And it gives you that look. Yeah, whether that thing is actually expensive or not is another thing. But, mm. but they are they are good at doing the high fashion cutting, using a very low cr- production cost to to do it. Therefore, yeah. they are doing so well. But if let's say today Anabu says I'm gonna four times my price, then of course you it will lose all your crowd. Uh, yeah, so yeah. your crowd will determine how you're gonna continue run it. Yeah, like for us, we have our crowds are seventy percent US, and then like I would say twenty five percent from all over la. Sometimes Japan one order. Korea one order oh, for you, uh. yeah for me huh. so actually to be honest from my online store alone 
to this day, it doesn't even stand 5% from Malaysia crowd. What the fuck? Yeah, really, it doesn't. And That's a lot... You, put US, you do put USD? I, I do put USD. And I was... Back then, it was quite long ago, like five years plus ago, I was the... To my own research, I was the first brand to sell in USD because I had this mindset of we have to target a global currency. Therefore, because online, anywhere... But they're not being picky of where you're from and shit like that. No, no, no. You, the reason why you have to pick a global currency for especially when you're targeting a wider audience meaning right yeah you have to put a currency that they're familiar with you ask someone from let's then say then they won't question uh where you're from or like correct where, okay so okay, they okay. feel comfortable oh they know okay this, okay this brand ships everywhere but if you go to a, a site let's say it sells in i don't know Rupees. thai but even yeah. you as a neighboring country I wouldn't. Right, you yeah you probably yeah like, like you said like, you, you feel like what the fuck right yeah. but because they never put it in USD, therefore it's it turns people away. Mm. Yeah. So I know that when you started out, right, it's very important to know this is that you start off at zero. So when you start off at zero, right, I thought about this Malaysian crowd thing as a you start, yeah, basically you start from zero, right? Therefore, a lot of the relationships that I need to build, it comes from me. It's not because I posted this brand, I launched this brand, all oh, people care about you. Because honestly, when like back when I launched it, I launched six products. It's not like people would give a shit like, oh, this person got six products. You get what I mean, right? Nobody yeah. would say, oh, this person got six products. Oh, it's cool, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Yeah. But you have to, back to the point of making connection, you have to meet the right people. You know who should wear your product and then you, you give it as a gift, like a seeding kind of thing. Yeah, dude. Because you start off. That, that's only because you start off. But after you start off, it's different already. Because, no, dude, yeah. I keep getting free shit. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get free shit. But for me, it's just a handful. It lasts than 10 people. Yeah, but you know you have to give it to like media outlets. You you, you just start as a marketing kind of thing. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I get it. Correct. No, yeah. I, I do. You're building relationships yeah. and you're kind of like giving a hands-on experience to your actual product yeah. instead of like kind of course. I mean, yeah. um, like like uh, me uh, and Stakes and I mean, not Stakes necessarily, mm. but like Arma mm. and um, Sean from Against. Yep. We have like a really good relationship purely b- b- based on of the simple fact that we like fuck with each other's products so much you yeah. know and then we keep on yeah. promoting I mean to be frank obviously there are there are designs that I might not like as much or like they don't like some of our music or you know of like, course, of there's course. always these kind of like criticisms and opinions about these yeah. things but at the end of the day we understand each other not because I don't want to say I'm like super friends with them because I don't think we hang, hang out other than when we see each other correct um but yeah, I mean, we, we understand what we're going through and we've built that connection and relationship to really just support each other regardless of whatever it is. I've been wearing this hat for like, I don't know how long, yeah. you know? Mm. Um, yeah. uh, against shit, like I, I mm. posed for like some of his pictures, like, I don't know, four years, three years ago when I first yeah. met him. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then they all kind of like approach it with like a similar mindset. Okay, here's here's a gift, I guess, for you guys on, yeah. um, to really... Um, see what we're about and then we bring them to our events and shit like that you know yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's a symbiotic and yeah, yeah. relationship so what I did wasn't seeding to influencers and, and anything like that but you have to I had a very you think so? yeah I have a very back end no, right now I don't even do seeding so so it's a different story right now but seeding previously well. that means I don't give influencers I don't give anyone oh, prominent seeding. like I don't give anyone except myself <laughs> like any product yeah. yeah so the problem is that um, is that how I used to see it is because um, you give out product to people that you, you would think really resonate with your brand not yeah. because somebody has like 200,000 followers really it doesn't make sense huh? because if you give someone 200,000 followers yeah. they, the it audience make sense. yeah they're probably just looking at you know like tits and dicks whatever it is yeah. but it's, it's not going to translate into sales but I built a brand in terms of like you try to make it based on your credibility and your ability. Therefore, you need people in the industry to know that you are doing something. Yeah. So we were, at the time we launched, we were fortunate enough because when I launched the first collection, I did a very like a personal tactic. I sent my, my basically, uh, what do you call that? Press kit yeah. to uh, Hibis, High Snow Party, these people. And what I did wasn't sending to their mail. I, s- I found their personal email yeah. and I did a very intrusive thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but you have to do what you, had, you gotta do. So at the I time, understand. I was like 22. I tried every kind yeah, of like it. free tactics, right? So fortunately, the High Snobiety head of editor, his name is Brock Cardina. So shout out to him. 
he really liked the brand and then he he even featured the brand without telling me. Like he just right. straight up posted in the Under the Radar series, which was a surprise because I'm like, hey, how come my website suddenly have this like like Influx. one one thousand yeah. visitors out of a sudden? Then I realized, oh, then he mentioned to me, oh, you actually we actually love your brand. Therefore we we feature your brand in the Under the Radar series. So that that sort of propelled me a little bit even in the in the scene here because it gives you a bit of a little bit of credibility yeah. and people True. know about you like oh who's this guy and then you be happened? like here's this link yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, the, yeah. and like at the time we were the first to do it so I even I was really shocked like I didn't know how to yeah. digest the feeling of wow like but obviously I know that it was I got lucky meaning it is not like wow a lot of brands don't deserve you or whatever it's just pure it's just me trying out different tactics and then yeah. you got it that way yeah but it really helps at the beginning stage where it's like, oh, I know, I, I saw that brand. But we need this. That's just the yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But like, I feel like to develop, I don't know, I understand your, your mentality and, yeah. I, and I guess it does work for clothes because yep. there's, n- I don't know, like people don't really like attach a certain kind of context to clothes that much nowadays. Like, oh, this is from Italy or this is from US or this is from, Fr- I mean, US oh, yeah. maybe. That, that really, you know? really. Mm. I mean, that, mm. like where is acronym from? Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't attach, Berlin, a, yeah. you wouldn't attach anything to yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Um, uh yeah so i guess that is fine but like i do believe that people we, we've come to a point where there's too much i mean there are like an influx of creatives there's a mm-hmm. lot of creatives but not a lot of sustainers of the environment of the industry you know mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. a malaysian kind of high snobiety mm-hmm. for malaysian high, i mean we have masses yeah, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> where are you smiling for <laughs> you are smiling you <laughs> No, you smile first. <laughs> you you have to provide some context. Therefore, yeah, I can uh, respond yeah, to so, it. <laughs> so masses, masses is like one of those like, examples yeah. where um it could be yeah. that that kind of level, but I don't know the way that they're operating is more like uh news or like press yeah um, about uh, yeah, brands yeah. and not really like features or editorials. Yeah. Um, no, it used to be like like everything. Yeah, but I think I think from money. what I see is mo- money is the one thing, but yeah. also manpower is like. Like let's say you run masses, you have to be r- so aware of what's happening. Only you can get like different, different like subculture features so that it makes the site something like that. Yeah. But right now, I mean, maybe it's under stuff. The, it's very yeah, hard I mean, to the, being yeah. Lack of manpower is definitely a direct yeah. relation to not having money to pay for correct. manpower, right? Correct, correct. And it's I understand, you yeah. know, like it is difficult to run businesses mm. like ours. You know, it's damn hard. <laughs> L- like your safe house it's like I don't know we haven't been open for so long we've lost like a bunch of money yeah uh, luckily we've <laughs> true, but most of it through rent right huh? most of it through rent like the yes, money through rent, rent. Yeah. and um, fucking I got the most expensive internet plan because <laughs> I thought we wanted like fast internet here but we're so not, everyone can use yeah but okay, we're not okay, okay, really okay. using it and then yeah. you can't I don't know man like yeah, it's yeah. overhead lah, basically all mm. these costs um, yeah for sure for sure yeah, you know, like it's it's hard yeah. to like sustain yeah. doing what you want to do yeah. and like providing the very best that you can towards the community or like Absolutely. the industry yeah. without having hit with like major financial setbacks. Yeah, like um, not having money to pay for your staff. Uh, yeah. yeah, depending on advertising. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know how they work. I'm guessing yeah, advertising. Yeah. So, right? so for me, right, because since the start, I'm running it on my own. Yeah. So therefore, you can pay yourself when you make money you can don't pay yourself when you don't make money. And yeah. there is no physical store. The only thing I'm paying for is the online store, the monthly subscription of 30 USD. And the domain, I guess. Right? Yeah, basically the domain, which costs less, basically less than a thousand per year. So, so you have to keep the cost at a minimum. Yeah, but that's something very hard to do. Because sometimes you, sometimes the things that you want to do, like other creatives, is expensive. Yeah. You can't keep cost at minimal. But if you can keep it at a minimal, then of course the you have a longer stretch of run you know you can you can you can yeah. spread the bread a bit more for yeah. yourself yeah to but run you know like entity. it's always just like fuck yeah. you know it's all about like do I want to keep pursuing my passion Absolutely. or do you want to starve yeah you know like stuff be- yeah <laughs> because it's like you're not making that much money in Correct. the end of the day yeah like fortunately for us safe house is not dependent on on, on just safe house right. yeah. all of our partners have other things other going things on. to do yeah um. Mm. Yeah, but that, like I wanted to get back with you. You said yeah. that you you used to be in advertising. Yes, correct. And then you you're focusing full time now on your brand. Yeah, right. Right now, yes, I'm full time on a brand. So so how I started was I was in the advertising industry for about two years. Yeah. Uh, bigger agencies. What were you doing? 
I was designer, yeah. like sort of designer, art director responsibility. Yeah. So the usual shit, like, you know, like if Samsung comes out with a campaign, you have to do the 360 thinking, whatever design, you know, you, you are sort of like, you try to do everything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it's pitching, sometimes it's anything. So I used to work on Samsung, uh, mainly on uh, Carlsberg as well, and uh, some of the KFC as well. Yeah. So the usual stuff, like, you know, big campaigns, they have money, they, they want you to come up with a big idea. Yeah. The usual shit in advertising. Yeah. So that's what I did. But before that, I took a trip to Tokyo. So that was an eye opener because I used everyone to be, says that. No, it is true because <laughs> everyone yeah. fucking oh, I went to Tokyo and uh, anyone that hasn't everything been changed. Co- obviously, would not completely understand. It's different when you look through pictures, yeah. but when you look at the their way they there. correct their lifestyle, the way they consume culture or whatever, right? You get you get a sense that oh, it's different. You know, it's different. Like for me, of course, it's different. yeah. It's so it's so different. Yeah. So for me, uh, my first love. I usually I, I love to call it my first love. Is a Sophisticated street streetwear is founded by Hiroshi Fujiwara yeah. and also this guy. I forgot his name. Okay, but I'll get to it. Softnet. The brand is called Softnet. So if have you heard of FC Bristol? Yeah. So they uh, run a very like soft football team. Correct. It's is a it? fake football team uh-huh. in collaboration with Nike. So it, there's no such football team, huh. but they create football gears for people. Right. Yeah. So it's an imaginary brand, something like that. So it's cool. But of course, things like this you don't get it here. You have you you need to f- be from a main market like New York, yeah. Tokyo. Then it makes sense, right? And of course, it's under Hiroshi Fujiwara. When they can just fuck around like they that. They can just easier <laughs> la, easier to fuck around. La. Let's not call it easy, but it's so much it's easier. Just like, let's make a fake yeah. football team. Yeah, correct. So when I look at that brand, specifically Softnet, yeah. they do speci- uh sophisticated <laughs> menswear, and therefore that struck with me like. That stuck with me and I wanted to do something similar. That's why like when I started out, I have like cut a lot of like cut and sew button pieces that reflects that kind of attitude. Because at the time, like really like five years ago, Malaysia was really a fashion desert, like desert. There's no no sophisticated menswear. But right now you can you can see like people like Joe Cha doing so well. Uh you, you you do find it here, and especially with Uniqlo coming in and everybody's basics level has gone up. Yeah. Because it used to be the ultra tight hoodie from H&M yeah. and you only wear khaki pants chinos yeah. the ugly cargos right? it's Japan's influence man Japan's influence man like total domination right now and, and they just passed the Zara yeah they just passed Zara in terms of I think what sales? revenue right yeah, yeah. Some sales or some shit like that yeah. but not, not in terms of the global thing yeah but yeah so that's how I started because there, there was a gap like we was the, the few brands that started that time like, like Good Times Future Man that, that was like a pioneer period where no other small brands are doing that kind of clothes yeah yeah so but it's hard to like sustain huh? i guess that's the issue right hard to sustain is is a constant issue meaning to this day every brand is also trying to figure out like oh how to sustain yeah, yeah. versus if let's say if you're from a big market honestly it's easier it's slightly easier to like because like let's say the ratio of people taking interest in your stuff is maybe like three uh, percent this, this, this is what i meant like when people start talking about population yeah no it, I don't, can, I don't necessarily agree, honestly. You don't necessarily no, agree. I yeah, don't. but it also depends on context, like, meaning the stuff that you do. So back back to like, like for example, you make something. Let's say you're a Malaysian. You want to cater to the Malaysian market. But let's say you're a furniture designer, custom furniture designer. You <laughs> want to sustain... <laughs> okay, that's a bit fucking niche. La. Get something... But we broad, are doing something broad, niche. Yeah. So like for me, I guess, for me, yeah, I'm doing something you niche. You think right? it's niche? Ah? Very niche. In Malaysia, it's very niche. So I'm just going to put it that way. It, in Malaysia, it's definitely niche. You feel like a lot of people should wear that kind of thing, like functional. Yeah, buy com- local. Yeah, or thrift. One of those two. Exactly. So, but you still, it is still a tough bridge to get. Like it's not, it's not, it's not something that you yourself can do it. You have to, you know, you have to be, have multiple entities, and you need to. Throughout time, it will change. Like for example, you call you say you call it streetwear. Like five years ago, it's different landscape, mm. and this is not something that I can describe in a paragraph, because you see the transition. Year real by year, time. real time transition. Yeah. So back to the point, like, like, I know how you see it. Like, you can disagree with the population thing, but let's just say you are doing something. In my case, I'm doing something close to 500 ringgit, and some people would requires like making some product to be about thousand ringgit. So why why is it a problem? Because in Malaysia, there is definitely a a spending issue. Meaning, most people don't make a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. So if you make a thousand bucks product. It's really hard to aim the 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 local local audience with yeah. that kind of product. I mean, I I understand because That's why they yeah. they spend their disposable income on yeah. like other brands. Yeah. <laughs> the, the so I'll give you an example. Like 
let's say you know how to save your costs to the minimum yeah. and you do niche stuff, right? But put yourself in a situation, let's say you're in China, you're in a hub in Shanghai or yeah. Beijing. It's really easier for you to sell out yeah. the minimum thing that you do. But uh, here, if you just want to sell to Malaysians, of course, it's going to be a bit harder, challenging, not impossible. Yeah, no. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I just think it's not matured. I think that yeah. at the end of the day, I just the scene here is not matured to the point where they're Correct. like, okay, I understand that I want to buy local. It's yeah. getting there. Yeah. And like you said, it's a real-time progression. Yeah. Back then, everybody was wearing like super fucking shitty H&M yeah. shirts. And now people understand, oh, Uniqlo <laughs> is like fucking good, even yes. though for the price, it's pretty cheap. Exactly. Um, yeah. So there is a nicer standard to what I'm doing every day. Yeah. So once uh, everybody starts realizing that over yeah. time and we build these communities together, yeah. m- maybe people understand, okay, that, that these right. kinds of clothing... Yeah. might be uh, uh like worth my money yeah. instead of like yeah. some other internet. yeah that's why it's a progression thing so yeah. it's not so real life and what you're trying to create is different right like yeah. real life you're dealing with bills and shit like that your bills and shit won't wait for you to make it for before you pay it you know that yeah. kind of thing so it really depends on how you balance your book so it's very important as a malaysian creative you have to juggle the money properly lah. yeah if you just like straight up just gone one shot right that means you, you can't stay in the game yeah. because your, your creation wouldn't be seen, that kind of thing. Yeah. So back to like sustaining a brand like this, it's very simple to, to see it like in Malaysia. It's, not, it's really not mature number one, not mature enough yet. And of course, it's a spending power. So let's say I have friends that really fucks with my stuff, really want to buy it. But for them, it's really like, oh, cannot, uh, I need to pay this, pay that. And then 500 for them is a lot. Mm. Yeah. But for someone that I don't even know from US, Europe. It's 100, 100 yeah, they just They just bought it, man. I, I mean, don't even yeah, know him. I mean, obviously, because yeah. they're like, okay, this doesn't cost that much in terms of my money. Yeah, that's why. So mm. it really depends on the context. So it really depends because for me, I'm not just trying to target local. Therefore, I just put up as a world citizen brand. Yeah. So naturally, if you put your heart into it, people can feel the 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 spirit of making a, I'll say, very neutral brand that is for everybody. Yeah, but if you are, say, you want to target local, mainly local, that is doable as well. But you have to factor in a lot of things like pricing and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It can't, it can't be one t-shirt 450, you know. It's just more difficult. Yeah, you <laughs> have to like really consider yeah. things. So like when Neighborhood sells 450, not to say his t-shirt lasts no longer than that, you. Uh, yeah. No one, right? That's why in Malaysia, that's why I say it's in Malaysia, right? Yeah. So you see crossover, like take in some of the stuff. Yeah, some is some of the, it is relationship building, fucking, bro. Fucking uh, yeah. Waiko Maria guilty. Yeah. Then it's, it's yeah. stupid expensive. Yeah, so one of the backs. It's not it, even like oh okay, it's expensive. No, it's like stupid. It's expensive. stupid expensive. Yeah, yeah. And, but then you see, but if you justify it to like Japan, they probably the people that buy it, they, they probably don't even think they like oh I like. Think so? Spirit. No, I think it's st- still slightly expensive there, la. Yeah, but they they will pay for it, la. Yeah. So here is it requires more persuading, right? Yeah before you do the kind of purchase. Yeah. Uh, so just, that's, that's the difference, yeah. yeah. I just want to get back, like, yeah. um, like you said, you, you, like to your advertising, mm. uh, advertising yeah. days. What, what, like now you're doing this brand full time. What, what made you stop that? Stop advertising. Yeah, I mean, I guess, the, the, <laughs> honestly, the, there are a lot of things that I hear about. Yeah. Ali, Alisha, my girlfriend, she, yeah. she studied mass comm and mm. I mean, she has friends in the industry and she, she yeah. also had experience there. Yeah. And then um, recently, yeah. I mean, I have this, like, my mom's cousin uh, is uh, Fazil Fuad. He's the CEO of C27. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know him. Yeah, um, yeah so, and then like last two weeks or something, we went yeah. to go see him. I never really talked to him before and then I just, yeah. for some reason, I don't know. So we just talked to him um, and then he was telling me about the whole kind of world and Netflix yeah. and... I've, yeah, they uh, used to have Netflix whatever. <laughs> No, uh, they still have Netflix, I think. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, whatever. Yeah. Point is that I was yeah. just like, wow, this is, this is such a different... World. World... That con- I don't know this like mm-hmm. you're a creative but yeah. the way that you see and do things is yeah. completely different yep. than how you do it uh, um, there yeah uh, you know like it's it's just because it's commercial so yeah. you have to wear two hats one is when I do my own stuff usually definitely it's very independent spirit that kind of thing yeah. but when you do commercial advertising is pure commercial yeah. you don't make money the client don't pay so why would I go for a niche campaign right unless you're in Again, <laughs> bigger market. Yeah. Then you can have Nike Lab, right? But KL don't have Nike Lab. You know, yeah. you have even you're in bigger market, you can test out products that are like smaller, smaller. That means smaller range of products. Then you use like micro influencer like Arison Hugh to create 
a Nike Lab range of products. Yeah. It is not mass because in the end of the day, whatever Everson Hill, this ambush people do, right? Yeah. It is for a n- taste making crowd. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're still not targeting the mass. KOL or whatever. Correct. Yeah, you're not selling Air Force Ones, you know. No, but that's yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, I wanted to different. say. It's just, there's like a weird lens to it, you know, like. In advertising, right? Yeah, in advertising. Yeah. It's a weird <laughs> fucking lens to it. It does seem a bit depressing. It is depressing. And then this is, I don't know if this is yeah. why you quit or like you stop. That is why I quit. Whatever you feel. <laughs> Because um, it's not that I have completely left the industry because yeah. in the end of the day, my resume is relevant to that industry. Therefore, they are more willing to pay me whatever it is, right? Like yeah. recently, the e-commerce thing. So they are still the industry that has money flow in it. And this is a problem because it makes people in the industry a bit self-absorbed. Like because when you, when you step out of advertising, right? People don't care about you. Like right. wh- whoever, whether it's, it's a creative a director, the brand, exactly. The company yeah, you can be whatever director you, you want you to label yourself outside of the advertising. Nobody gives a shit about you. Yeah, completely don't have. Therefore, they feel when they stay in it, they feel like they have to be in it because people outside don't appreciate what they do. And this, there's a as an artist that kills you. Uh, definitely kills because it's commercial, right? When, yeah, you, when like, you talk about <sighs> yeah, commercial, then then me. you have to deal with hierarchy. Like oh man, I have. To, like let's say you are very creative. Let's say you're a millennial. You have a bunch of ideas, good ones. But in the other day, maybe your creative director is like maybe forty years old, yeah. and he doesn't relate, and maybe his mood is not right. It's like, uh, you know what, Fahan, let, let, yeah. let's not do that idea. Although your idea is great, maybe you don't have the experience to pull off three sixty, but that's why you needed his help. Yeah. But in the advertising industry, especially the bigger companies that pays people better, the problem is still a lot of processes like top down issue yeah. and number one that's just one side advertising is just one side of it but it's fine the though biggest right? issue is fine is it really? fine mm. you, I don't know yeah. like there's two ways that you can look about it like yeah. I think creatives are a bit entitled sometimes they're Definitely. just like well, you know yeah. like, look at me look at me you know, for like, sure for sure why don't you yeah. why don't you pay attention to my creative genius yeah. but on the other hand it's just yeah. like yeah you work in a corporate company. Yeah, exactly. Even though it's creative, it doesn't yeah. change the fact that it's a corporate company. Correct. You have a CEO. Yeah. You have a managing. You have a yeah. manager. You yeah. have a lead. You have a yeah. whatever. Correct. That's why you have to decide you want to stay in that game or you're not. You can leave. Yeah. You want to get yeah. paid or yeah. you not. Yeah. So for me, I know that when I'm doing a certain project, I'm mm. giving it my all. Yeah. But when you step out of it, you have to think, is this for you long term? Yeah. So for me, of course, at the point of taking an offer, it's definitely about the money. Like, you got to pay me enough for me to say yes to produce whatever, to listen to you or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have to decide for yourself, is it, does the money make sense enough for you to, you know, <laughs> forego whatever passion that you have? Because your passion probably... You don't make, have to forego. Yeah. Then you do it half-heartedly because you don't have, you don't have the same amount of time. Yeah, like creative juice. Uh, creative juice. Yeah. That's, that's a real thing. But of course, like, you, you find people, some people have more energy. Yeah. And they can do it, you know, yeah. even in their yeah. free time. Like, fuck, 2, 3, 8 p.m. 2, 3 a.m. you're doing it. But probably, like, for me, 2, 3 a.m., the anything. way I relax, I'm done. I'm fucking watching anime, Attack on Titan, yeah. or whatever shit, right? But yeah. some people can just, like, no, my life is all about my creation. Yeah. yeah. It's, it depends on how you're going to do it. So, for me, I can multitask when I'm in a corporate environment. Meaning, I can do, wow, this project, one idea, three idea, three idea. But when you say multiple facets, like, me being in, a, in an agency, and then running, like, last year, running my own brand... Definitely, running my own brand is rewarding. a bit, not, yeah, definitely rewarding. But you have less time, oh. therefore, it's more half-hearted. Yeah, you have less time for the brand. You have less time for the brand. Huh. And like for example, when you work uh, Monday to Friday, therefore, oh, you mean while even working even in your service will decline because oh, okay, I would tell people faham, like faham. Saturday only I can ship out your products. Then sure. you probably have to wait five days or whatever. So in it's yeah. a whole totality, and especially when it comes to independent brand, right? Like, let's say you start a brand today. I mean, I'm doing this shit. Correct. Right? This Every, is my free time. A lot of things will reflect you. Like, yeah. whatever you do will reflect on it. So, when you are doing... People can feel it, you know? Like, when you're doing shit half-heartedly. Yeah. You are not full-time. Do you guys think yeah. I'm doing this half-heartedly? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, it's a natural progression. No, so, I understand. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, was it hard to forego your... I don't know how much your, your gaji is every month to not getting it? Uh, that's that's a balance that for until you are stable, which I think most people won't be stable until yeah. you know they are fifty. There will always be a struggle, uh, yeah. Especially when you are someone who started something like an indie label or something like or or a movement, it, it's hard to step away because 
every time, let's say you are taking gaji or something like that, you always think like, oh, it was so rewarding when I'm just doing shit for myself. Yeah. Yeah. But versus, versus someone who has never created anything, not a bad thing at all, because less distraction. You take gaji, you take gaji, you climb a it's corporate easy. ladder. Easy. Bro, no, no confusion. Man. Like for me, right, one of the issues I'm facing right now is say I, I own multiple smaller business, mm. not, not business that I need to pump money in. But there's one thing that is so, so distracting, like even the paperwork will kill you. Say you own four companies. Imagine you have a full-time job. Some, some day, yeah, the secretary though. will call you, whoa, fuck, settle this paperwork issue. Yeah. And sometimes you have to print like 100 pages of document. Yeah. I got, Just a, I, got, I got one small sin you ever had. It is very it's annoying. It's fucking annoying, dude. Yeah, and I have every to pay year, so much. Exactly. Every year, even when you're idle, like there's no, there's no money flow in it, right? Yeah. You have to pay close to 5k. But and it, 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 it's bullshit. It's stupid. That's why I say don't get a sin you ever had. Fuck it. Do if you're not doing an independent get thing, a fucking Sinyan independent Sinyan whatever yeah. it is, yeah. brand or whatever, stay the fuck away from sin you ever had. Just stick so to partnership. So what? You got, you're liable. Yeah. So what? Like yeah. it's your brand, yeah. so fucking what? You know, you don't need a yeah. private uh, person because you have to pay like fucking a- anything how much? Illegal. Six, yeah. seven, six, seven k a year. Yes, correct. Stupid, stupid, right? Yeah, yeah. So that itself <laughs> is a distraction. And tax someone. I'm just like I'm not <laughs> paying anyone. Exactly. Yeah, but tax, of course, you can avoid. You just cash out your bet, your fucking, your full yeah. earnings, right? Then yeah. you're just not liable to tax. But back to the point, right? A person who is just focusing on gaji, right, has less distraction. So yeah. when you, you've done it, right, it's very hard for, for you to transition back. So yeah. as I was transitioning back, I didn't left because of all this like, conflict of interest in my brain. It's because I, was, I, I did join a more toxic company. Yeah, That's like a they... really toxic company. Like beyond toxic to the point of it's nothing like before. It's even worse than before. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's okay because in the end of the day, you get to save up. Like for me, last year I was doing this, right? So I, got, I really got to save up and this year, even if I don't do anything, I can sustain myself. Yeah. So, as a creative, it really depends on how are you going to navigate your creation mm. with the money that you earn. Yeah. But obviously, when yeah. your bank is zero, right? What kind of creativity? Yeah. You know, body art? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, like, right, it's you very kinda, difficult. How, how are you going to be an artist? Yeah. 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 So, that's a balance that you need to think about a lot, yeah. especially as a creative in Malaysia. Mm. So, you just balance yes, of interest. Yes, you yeah. do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like sometimes I, for this podcast, like yeah. I, I want to like focus on like I haven't been doing it thus far. It's a lot about more like characters and experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, but events I haven't really been talking about like what's been happening because oh, events, the yeah. Malaysian creative arts industry. Wait, what's happening? I, what's happening? Really what will attention. happen? <laughs> I, I don't know anymore because it's like COVID, and yeah. I'm just thinking right now like what could I bring up? Like that's like the recent streetwear or like clothing kind of drama or what if something drama that, what drama nothing, are you talking exactly, about exactly yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even bring up because it's been it's been quite quiet right like yeah, generally yeah, yeah. In, in, in I mean I don't know the only thing that I can bring up is like that master's collaboration with ASICS you know the, the shoe oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's yeah, cool that's see, cool the yeah. Twin Towers shoe yeah. um, that's a good step but like otherwise I don't know <laughs> what else yeah. to bring up yeah to be honest um, you mentioned something about like being jaded and stuff as, and mm. something like that, right? Yeah. So obviously when I started out, I have abundant of energy. Like I'm okay to meet people. I'm okay to attend events. How old are you now? I'm 28. But when I was 22, it's a different story. Yeah. Like I was, I was unapologetic. I'm in your face. Even if you, I don't even know if you don't like me or not. That, that was like when I was so young. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Right. But yeah. of course I have no regrets because it's a natural progression as a person. Yeah. yeah. I used yeah. to be an asshole too uh, back then. Yeah. No, so you, much you, of more opinions. You didn't know you're an asshole. Not no, you're an, an asshole. Or you knew. <laughs> sure. I, knew I, I didn't know a, I was an asshole. I knew asshole. I was being a dick sometimes. Yeah. I knew I was like yeah. unnecessarily talking shit. You can ask him. Yeah. Um, but now I've definitely lost lost that a bit. Uh, like just yeah, you the fact that I'm meeting mellow. people. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. And just, I'm meeting people and I have to like really um, sustain relationships because correct. it's actually important. Yeah, correct. Like the networking yeah. part, right? Yeah. So as I grow older, I tend to keep more to myself. Like, yeah. like of course, it really depends on who you mix with as well. Like for me, I'm in a state where I'm really trying to create my own thing. Like, like without that focus, the product don't even come out. So, it's hard for you to even like say you want to connect with people overseas, locally yeah. or whatever. You have to focus on your creation first. So that will take up a lot of your energy because you're focusing on the creation. Versus let's say back when you were younger, I was trying to focus on production and then the next day I'm like, oh, I need to go to this event. I want to yeah. meet these people. Right now, I'm just really solely focused on 
production first and then everything will come later you know oh, it's like take, you take things like as it Slower. as it goes la, like yeah. follow the flow a bit la, yeah grown up shit grown up shit man yeah. I understand yeah. it's not that fun but it's like yeah I'm sure like it's yeah, that one of the things that I used to be like really vocal about back yeah. then was like old people, mm. just old people this, old people that they're like lame, blah blah. blah. <laughs> and then, I don't know, like I'm I'm feeling like that now. Honestly, yeah. I feel I, like I'm still doing a lot of things productively. Obviously, yeah, um, yeah. But like, I'm I'm understanding of it. I'm empathetic of like absolutely the old people tropes. Bro, I used to think like traits. that one. I look at my uncles, like you know, you know those usual Chinese family <laughs> feud, right? <laughs> And then I was like, yeah, why why are these people like this? Why do they argue among themselves? Like yeah. why why does this even matter? And then as you grow up, you know, oh here okay, actually it matters. Yeah, because you know your why back they fought, is hurting right? and you touch go yeah, do Exactly, you right? Like, yeah. You have to think about food. Yeah. I used to be like, why don't you do your own thing, man? You're yeah. so much more free. I'm like, yeah, I used oh, to bro, say come on, everyone has different issues. Like they support Son. their parents, they whatever pay for diapers, shit. Yeah. <laughs> everyone has their own issue man yeah, yeah. so it's i'd like to apologize to like any old people that i have may have offended and you i'm sure there's like a lot of you <laughs> that are still supportive of me and i'd like to thank you for being <laughs> but yeah. anyway um we hmm. reached the one hour mark and uh um, oh, have we yeah that's quick <laughs> that was um uh, but i, I yeah. just like you know it was fun talking to you thanks so much you really like me. give me a lot of insight on yeah. the on the, on the, uh, the advertising world i kind of understand now because Expected, everyone right? says the same Correct. fucking shit except Correct. for Zulam Ren. he said that was a good uh, 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 phase of his life to get like the network and to like it's, it's not all bad you yeah. really know you get to know a lot of people yeah. especially when you are in an established agency yeah but uh, currently as it stands because of the whole client culture right now the bad still outweighs the good because yeah. client in Malaysia is still run by I don't know the older generation, older thinking. I mean, especially with digital it's marketing because mm. it's like so much fast pace. Like you need Ooh. like churn out yeah. shit all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, but no, but on on the on the production of like clothes and our yeah. like scene in Malaysia, it yep. definitely gave me a lot of insight on that because mm. I wasn't aware. I still don't know. I mean, sophisticated, mm. sophisticated clothes. Yeah. Could be like the best way to describe it. Sophisticated tech yeah, wear. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know what it is. I would say like, Technical, functional. Technical, functional. There's more, there's more crafts to it, you know. Slightly uh, more, slightly more. That is growing and I do support all these brands because I love good times. Like, yeah. I, I really like, because it's so simple. It's like stuff that I feel like I could wear every day. Yeah, like uh, Shura and Good Times. They have this yeah. lifestyle kind uh, of thing going on. I wear yeah. Shura to work. Um, I wear your shorts to it's like... It's a very part, everyday uh, clothes. Yeah, yeah, everyday clothes, which yeah. I want because I haven't bought yeah. like... Ex- like branded clothes in like a while now absolutely and i need to transition to like a whole local wardrobe sometime soon yeah um but yeah thank you very much uh for joining me at safe house to you presents mulu murai uh this episode 25 i'm with zz (laughs) from idol ido uh if you guys want to follow him uh instagram at idol.ido no instagram is i-d-l-e-i-d-o yeah just uh, add i-d-l-e-l-d-o yeah. and um yours that's it mine is z-z dot liu z-z dot liu l-i-u yeah and yeah, mine is it. uh say s2u dot pod and v's at v's cool lucy if you guys any have any feedback oh also let me know what the fucking video do you guys like the video because um these guys are at the back sean is at the back arif is like gonna be handling <laughs> most of the content nowadays you guys know arif aka or um yeah was it was this a good angle is it do you need more variety or whatever editing nah, let us know in the comments or you can do it directly to me at Lucy or at s2u.pod um, thanks very much thanks easy thanks for having me uh, catch us next Monday ciao ciao